you recently had an article published in The Economist, and it was called Fears About AI's Existential Risk Are Overdone. And right next to that, in the same Economist issue, the scientific director of Mila and one of the most well-known people in AI, uh, Turing Award winner, Joshua Bengio, uh, aired his concerns about the risks. So um, I thought that was a really cool contrast to read side by side. And so, yeah, in your opinion, why are the fears about AI's existential risks overdone? Um, yeah, how do how do your voice how do your how, how how does your view differ from from people who are big X risk uh, uh, warriors? So uh, the actual difference in opinion when you you focus in on the things that we truly disagree on are, are relatively small. I'm perfectly willing to recognize that AI could both be used by human beings for a number of nefarious purposes, and it's entirely possible, maybe even one might say likely, that there will be instances in the not too distant future where AI systems due to misalignment and due to emergent behaviors that researchers had not anticipated, do stuff that we don't like that could potentially have very negative consequences. Where I really split with many people, including with Joshua to some extent, uh, though I agree with a lot of what he says, where, where I split with many people, though, is this question of would there be a situation where a super intelligent rogue AI system literally wipes out humanity or at least like enslaves the entirety of humanity? And, and I do not think this is a very likely scenario. I consider it a pretty wild hypothetical. And I don't think it's something we should be focusing our discussions on, nor something that should be occupying more than a small niche slice of research. And to be clear, I'm not saying no one should discuss this. I'm not saying no one should study it. I'm just <laughs> saying that I have a sort of gut, like, come on, really reaction when I hear people talking about it being a massive priority that we should be pouring tons of resources into. And the reason I'm skeptical comes down to the following. I think that many people, when they make these statements, what they're doing is they're extrapolating to return to something else we were discussing a moment ago from the idea that if an AI starts to adhere to norms of survival and reproduction, necessarily the next logical step is that it's going to seek our extinction or seek to dominate us. And I think that this is a reflection of a fundamental misunderstanding of the nature of natural selection and how species interactions actually work. And I think that's in part due to the fact that most of the people saying these things, with all due respect to all of my colleagues, are people coming from a pure computer science background who don't actually know very much about bi biology and ecology and who don't really understand fully how natural selection works. And the reason I say this is when you look at the actual things that natural selection tends to favor and how evolution works, it's, it's not about dominance and competition between species. It's all about finding a niche that works. You will successfully reproduce if you find a niche that actually positions you in a complementary nature to all of the other species in the environment. So generally speaking, actually, competition and dominance are the exception to the rule in natural selection, not the key force. Instead, it's actually mutualism and cooperation and complementary niches that are how what evolution really favors. The only time you have direct competition between two species where there's some kind of you know, quest for dominance in the ecosystem is when the two species really occupy the same niche. They've just happened to randomly evolve towards the same niche, and maybe one's an invasive species or something like that. Then you will see competition between the species, and, and there will be potentially a sort of winner and a loser. But I think the key point there is they have to occupy the same niche. And this now brings me to why I don't fear it with AI. AI does not occupy the same niche as human beings. <laughs> AI is not seeking the same energy inputs. AI is not seeking the exact same raw materials. And in fact, when you look at our relationship to AI systems, we occupy perfectly complementary niches. We are the critical determinant of all, most of the resources that AI needs. 
We're the ones who produce the electricity. We're the ones who produce the computer chips, who do all the mining necessary to get the materials for the computer chips, et cetera, et cetera. I could go on with a big, long list. I think that the idea that an AI system would ever seek to extinguish us is absurd. Any AI system worth its salt that is adhering to the norm of survival and reproduction would actually seek the preservation of the human species above all. And furthermore, I think that what any AI system that was actually truly intelligent and able to adhere to these norms of survival and reproduction would do is figure out the best ways to work in a complementary nature with human beings, to maximize our respective success at achieving our goals. That's what natural selection and evolution would favor. That's what an instinct to survival and reproduction would favor. And I think that that's what we're going to see in our society. And I'm really pretty confident about that pronouncement. I, I don't say it with 100% certainty, but I'm confident enough that I sleep very well at night having published an article telling everyone to chill the hell out about this topic. <laughs> and I, I really do stand by this perspective. I love everything that you just explained. And uh, again, it resonates with me perfectly. The interesting thing, for me at least, is that I have spent a fair bit of time in recent years reading about or having conversations with people about X risk, and nobody has explained it like you just did to me. And I suddenly feel like I'm going to be sleeping better at night <laughs> yes. um, because it that does make a huge amount of sense to me. Even humans who are at the extreme end of not cooperating well with our environment and testing yes. its limits, even we, it's like we're tons of people and more and more people all the time as a proportion are raising this flag about we've got to cooperate with this ecological system if we're exactly. going to continue. Yeah. Exactly. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but that's yeah, another example. Yeah. Like, I think like, you know, the, when we look at humans, I think part of the reason that there is this assumption that the AI will try to extinguish us all is because <laughs> there has been a tendency sometimes in human evolution for humans to extinguish other species and to overstrain our capacity and not to act in a complementary way to other species. Though for the record, we do act in a complementary way to many species. Um, you know, raccoons are perfectly happy with humans, but regardless, <laughs> uh, I think the, the key point here is that if humans continue to behave like this, we will not be adhering to the norm of our own survival. We will eventually extinguish ourselves if we continue to act in a non-complementary nature to other species on earth. And so that would arguably be an example of human stupidity, not human intelligence. And so this is why, again, the funny, funnily enough for me, like I see this in terms of both Yashua, you know, who I greatly admire and my ex-professor and someone who's been a real mentor for me, Jeffrey Hinton, when they're talking about these issues, clearly the possibility of super intelligence is part of what freaks them out and part of what leads them to these concerns. But I actually come to the opposite conclusion. The possibility of super intelligence is what makes me more confident that the AIs will eventually cooperate with us. That's what a super intelligent system would do. What I fear more, funnily enough, are dumb AI systems. AI systems that don't figure out what's best for their own survival, but which instead make mistakes along the way and do something catastrophic. That I fear much more. The analogy I always use is with the system in Dr. Strangelove. So in Dr. Strangelove, you know, the, the nuclear holocaust that occurs is a result of a Russian doomsday device that will automatically launch all of Russia's nuclear weapons if Russia's ever attacked. That's not a very smart system. That's not a super intelligence, but it leads to the end of the world precisely because it's this overly narrow, dumb thing. And that's actually what I fear much more than a rogue superintelligence.